Enterprise Management 360. Hello and welcome to another episode of Tech Chat. Thank you so much for joining us. Now on today's episode, I'm very excited to be speaking with Renan Gutman. She is the EVP Products of Enterprise and Learning at Kaltura. Now, Renan's going to be exploring enterprise video and virtual meetings with us today. So let's get started with this interview. Renan, thank you so much for joining me. It's great to have you here on this episode of Tech Chat. It's great being here. Thank you. So firstly, I think it's a good starting point is if you could share your thoughts on why organizations should be embracing video conferencing. To be honest, organizations don't really have a choice but to embrace video conferencing. Um, if you're looking at how much remote work has gone, how many gov- companies are global and looking at the remote workforce um, as, as an option to, to grow and expand, video conferencing is a key part of every collaboration. Even if you look today at, you know, look at the coronavirus, right? So we, we suddenly have a lot of organizations contacting us and saying, you know, we can't come together into the offices and meet. We can't, um, you know, we can't all be together. So we need some sort of solution in order to work together remotely and from home. So um, the use and the growth of virtual meetings and the ability to collaborate no matter where you are is, is absolutely on the rise. And I think we're seeing that in organizations all over the place. Um, and it's a way to to accommodate workers, to create a flexible working environment, to support remote workers, to create a global workforce, um, to react to whatever is going on in the world. So I think it's, it's become this critical tool that you can no longer um, be without. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that because you raise a good point. We're facing an issue at the moment with the virus spreading and we have these capabilities to allow people to work from home. So why don't we? And we're seeing it generally across the workforce as well. You know, people are more comfortable working from home and they find real benefits in it. On the other side of that, though, do you think there are any best practices you'd recommend or people should be implementing for virtual meetings? Yeah, absolutely. And I can tell you, you know, as someone who's who works remotely with, with my own team and with, with other team members quite a lot, I can tell you there's some really basic tips. Uh, one is, uh, obviously, you always want to have your camera on. It's something about knowing the person, not just their voice. Um, that's very different. Um, the other thing is I would say, you know, just think about the fact that especially if there's a few people in the room, other people are not in the room, you want to always say who's in the room. If you can't always see everyone on camera, just to make sure that you're, you know, you're part of the conversation, you know who's there, you can feel that sort of experience. It's about being able and being present in that conversation. I think it actually really helps. Uh, one thing I would say is that when you're looking at, uh, at virtual meetings, you actually want to think about you know, it's not just uh, being on camera and being able to mimic that face-to-face experience, but really think about what are the tools that these virtual meetings can provide you um, that you didn't have before that you can now share. So for example, record the meeting. So if someone that couldn't join the meeting um, wants to listen in later, they can. So, you know, these are things that are not there in the face-to-face meetings. And I think these are great tools that we can leverage the medium to do more than we, than we did before. 100% agree and even from this example I'm sitting in London you're there in New York we're still able to have this conversation so it's interesting how it's showing the business will develop and that leads me nicely onto my next point here so the space has changed so much over the past couple of years hasn't it and it's really evolved so how is that going to keep going with the evolution over the next couple of years and how will it be embraced further? Well, I think, um, you know, when I look at what's happening already today, it's, it, you know, we, we are having more and more virtual meetings and it's not just, you know, one-on-one meetings, but it's also really large meetings. So even on the webcasting side, if you're looking at what organizations do today, it used to be that CEO town halls were once a year, maybe, maybe four times a year, you know, once a quarter. Um, and now it's become once a week or once a month. Um, and you see VPs and EVPs and, and you see, everyone trickle down and want to have these large meetings with their teams and you're seeing more communication that's spread out right you're seeing more training and you're seeing more webinars and you're seeing a lot more of the communication that's based on these virtual meetings so i think one is um, we have to start thinking about it not just in the sense of here are the big meetings that we want to have production value for and here are the one-on-one meetings for everyday collaboration but actually start to think of it as like a full spectrum of meetings uh, where you want to do one-on-one or you want to bring a lot of people or suddenly you have a lot of people showing up um, and you want to have very large meetings and you essentially want to empower everyone to create any sort of meeting. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And as I said, it's interesting to see where it's going. And to kind of wrap up here, to enable those processes is very important. So do you think we're going to see this more widespread to businesses and trickle down into all areas? I think, you know, you're going to be seeing a lot more communities that are being created um, as a remote community or as collaboration spaces in different ways. And I think, you know, even businesses, um, they're going into learning and training in a very different way. If you're looking at kind of the um, buzzwords that are going around today, whether it's upskilling or reskilling or, um, you know, uh, professional development, you're seeing all of this and you're seeing enterprises invest a lot more in learning and in training of their employees. And that's going to be a critical piece. And a lot of this is actually, I think a lot of, it's not no longer about having that one training team that's responsible to teach everyone, but rather empowering every employee to become a trainer. Um, and, and democratizing that capability and helping us create these communities that teach each other. Um, in many ways, you know, the way it's out there in the world, right? Whether it's in Stack Overflow, if you look at an example, or whether it's in uh, any other community that's working together and teaching each other, I think we're going to be seeing that more and more um, through companies, through educational institutions, through any area of life, to be honest. Excellent. It's exciting to see where it's all heading and I'm really enjoying the space and seeing how it's developing because there's just so many elements to it and so many uses. So Renan, thank you so much for coming on this episode of Tech Chat and walking us through all of this. And that's a wrap on this week's episode of Tech Chat. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you to Renan for taking the time to talk to me. Now, before you go, make sure you do go subscribe to our social media channels, which is LinkedIn and Twitter at Ian360. Also make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel to get more great video content. And more importantly, we have all of our great content hosted on em360tech.com. We'll be back soon with another episode of Tech Chat.